Deck T, please confirm it has gone on and check volume. When we start, when we start, yeah. Good evening, everybody. This is Koyo Helen, Apostle Koyo Helen from Nairobi, Kenya, coming to you live from Nairobi, Kenya on Trapeza TV. Today is a wonderful day. We'll be teaching you a wonderful topic to help you get your finances in order. Every, ever so often, we need a refresher on how to use our finances, how to use our money right. Jesus in the scriptures taught us on money. And if you go through the, the Bible from the very beginning in Genesis all the way to Revelation, money is talked about a lot. Jesus himself talked about money more than any other topic. So today we want to teach you a wonderful topic on getting out of debt. We, we want to bring you freedom and, um, and show you how to totally destroy debt out of your life. Hallelujah. Greetings from my wonderful husband, Apostle Joseph Helen, who is um, right now doing some business. We give God uh, praise for him. We thank God so much for him and for the vision God has put in his heart to help God's people all over the world to receive the freedom in Christ, to receive the word of God with revelation that makes it um, applicable and practical in, in their lives. God bless you so much. Okay, so getting out of debt. We just get my scriptures. First of all, I know that debt, debt is such, um, it's slavery. Whenever you're in debt, you feel like a slave. And you're a slave to the person who, to whom you owe money. And today I'm here to get you out of that kind of slavery in Jesus' name. And to get out of slavery... We must first find out who a slave is, and let's get straight into the scriptures. Also, Joseph Helen. Yes, we just confirmed. God bless you so much. My wonderful husband is online. I love you so much. Thank you for your support, even as we do tonight's uh, broadcast. So, as we go to the scriptures, Galatians 4, verse 1. Now, what I'm saying is this. As long as an heir is a child, he is no better than a slave, even though he owns everything. As long as a slave, as, as long as the heir is a child, he is no better than a slave, even though he owns everything. Now, what does that mean? As long as a person is a Christian, the riches of heaven belong to you. Everything that Jesus possessed on the cross is yours. You don't grow into it. 1 Corinthians 3.21 says, All things are yours. They become yours at the point you become a Christian. But for them to be practically yours, you have to grow. You have to know that they are yours. After knowing that they are yours, you have to declare that they are yours. And then you have to work out your salvation by speaking and by meditating on God's word so that those things that are, are yours spiritually become, a manif uh, become manifest physically. Hallelujah. The Bible says that no one can be an heir of great riches as long as the heir is a child. He is not different from a slave. So if you find that you're under the yoke of slavery, under the, bo uh, bo uh, under the yoke of debt, it's probably because there's slavery in your life. And slavery is brought in this case by ignorance of what God's word says. The child here in the book of Galatians 4.1 is nepios. Nepios means childish, untaught, unskilled, and unable to use words properly. So... Nepios. Nepios is a stage of growth. And this means that a person is still a child, um, untaught, unskilled, and unable to use the word properly. On very many occasions, my husband and, and I have taught you that you need to know the right words to use. If you're in a court of law, there are words, there's a lingua to use in that court of law that will enable you to receive um, benefits from the judge, from the magistrates. If you're in a marriage, there are codes for marriage. There are codes that a wife speaks to a husband. There are codes that a husband speaks to a wife. For that relationship to be meaningful, there is a way people communicate with each other. For a parent, 
and child relationship to be functional. There is a way children relate with their parents and there is a way parents relate to their children to make those relationships beneficial and useful. As long as you do not know the right lingua to use, you are a nephews in that area. You could be a giant in other areas, you could be so skilled, so successful in many areas of life, but in one area, as long as you do not know the words and the, um, the right things to speak and the right things to, um, to say, then you are nephews. But today we are here to teach you so that if you have been a nephews financially, you may grow up. And as you grow up, you will get the benefits that come from, uh, from the word of God. The child here is, um, the child here is Greek nephews, meaning childish, untaught, and unskilled and unable to use words properly. A nephews therefore is a slave. If you're financially childish, that means, for example, you spend emotionally. Um, you don't have a plan, you don't have a budget. You're financially untaught, financially unskilled, and lacking in the knowledge of financial talk or speech, you are a financial slave. If you find that you don't have a plan for your money, you, you don't know how to budget, and you, you don't know how much comes in or how much goes out, you don't know what your uses are, then you're unskilled in the, in the um, you, you're unskilled in using money. And now we want to teach you, this will not just be a financial class, it will be a spiritual class to enable you to use your finances right, so that you can break the yoke of slavery, the slavery of debt. If you're a financial slave, you will be indebted no matter how much you try to be free. If you do not know the words, if you do not know how to use money, you will always be in debt. And um, the, uh, uh, my work here is to get you out of childishness or that state of being a nephews. And this I will do by teaching you and giving you skill in the area of finances. God has called you to be an Uyos. You know, there are different stages of growth. And Nepios um, is, is a child, unskilled, untaught. Nepios is a, is a person who is unable to use words correctly. But God has called us to be Uyos, which is spelled as U H I U I O S. U I O S. It's um, a Greek word. That means a mature child who uses words correctly and has a rich heritage. You are a joint heir with Christ. The first thing you must know is that you are a joint heir with Christ. Now your financial situation today does not define who you are. Who you are is based on the amount of God's word in your heart and the amount of knowledge you have on financial matters. Um, you, you might be a possessor of so much but as long as you do not know what you possess, you cannot fully benefit by it. You cannot fully benefit by the word of God unless you know it, you've heard it. After you've heard it, you meditate upon it and then bring that which has been spoken into being. It's already real. There's nothing more real than the word of God. But for us to experience it, we must first know it. And then after knowing it, meditate on it. And then live as God's word is true. If God says, I am rich, Riches will not be defined by your bank account. Riches will not be defined by how much money you have in your pocket. Riches are defined by what God has deposited in your spirit. And how to bring that out is by speaking in tongues. You bring that out by knowing what God's word says. You bring that out when you're making transactions. You say who you are. And when the spiritual forces hear who you are, they align themselves and things work for you. If you're about to go and do a business deal, what you need to do is know what God's word says about you and then go forward in the boldness of that word and operate on it. If God's word has says that um, you're out of debt, get if God's word has said that you're rich and not in debt, then you get that word in and then you also get the wisdom on getting out of debt, which is what I'll be teaching you tonight. Now you are a joint heir with Christ and that is the greatest thing because as joint heirs it means that um, his, he and I are both heirs. Christ and us can both withdraw. For example, if you and um, let me give you a good example. My husband and I 
have joint accounts. And in those joint accounts, any of us can go and withdraw. It is the same thing when God calls us joint heirs with Christ. It means that we can withdraw everything that Christ can withdraw. So you have everything that Christ has. You're not disadvantaged. You're not disadvantaged or in poverty or in any such thing. What you have been in is probably ignorance. You've not known what God's word says about your situation, what's God, what God's word says about you. But the beautiful place we're beginning today is that you are a joint heir with Christ. If you're immature, you won't enjoy this heritage. Immature means you do not know, or you don't even know how to access these riches that we have in Christ Jesus. And another thing about it is that immature people fear suffering. You know, um, if we're going to follow what Christ, um, who Christ was, and he was the example for us, Christ did not uh, fear suffering. He suffered for us. And he said uh, that we should have the same attitude that he had, an attitude that is not afraid of suffering. And here, this is not just... Um, suffering for ignorance i'm talking about suffering for the right thing you know denying yourself making sacrifices so that you can enjoy what is yours for example um prayer is one of one thing that needs you sometimes to sacrifice it might call for you not to sleep to stay awake even though your body would rather sleep it calls for you to deny yourself so that you may seek the riches of the kingdom of God. Finances will require you to deny yourself sometimes for a greater thing. But many people are so afraid of suffering. One of the reasons even people are afraid of going forward is because of the sacrifice and the suffering that is required. Sometimes if you want to further your education, it means that you're going to sacrifice comfort. You're going to sacrifice um, sleep. You're going to sacrifice uh, time that you should be with friends and maybe just having a good time or uh, you know resting instead you'll be sitting down studying books one book after another meeting the requirements of uh, an exam meeting the requirements of lecturers but embrace the attitude that suffering is good now I'm not here I'm not saying suffering as an unbeliever I'm saying suffering um, to build and to develop a skill and in this place we're talking about the skill in finances Um, immature people fear suffering this is why they can't make money they want money now they don't want to put in what it takes you know you can decide um, today is the first of February and you can decide by December this year I will have made so many steps in my development financially and after deciding that then put in what it takes put in sacrifice sleep wake up early um, do the work that is required. Push yourself beyond what you've ever done. Because money doesn't just land in your laps. Not in the world and not in the church. You have to go out and make it. You must work out um, that which is within. You must work hard at whatever you do. God says that he will bless the work of your hands. So it's not a certain trade. It's not a certain people who are lucky. It is those who are willing to go out and work. And once you work, you will receive the labor, the fruit of your labor. Hallelujah. Because your hands are blessed. Um, the, and this immaturity leads to, to death. Because if you're not willing to suffer for a period, it means that you'll take the shortcut. And shortcut is borrow. If you find that you need to pay for certain things today, the easiest way is to just go borrow and once you've borrowed then you do whatever needs to be done today whether it's pay your bills for example you could even take a loan and pay rent and pay fees but that's not what god requires that is a shortcut the best way would be to work with your hands create the wealth and then pay debts especially debts that have to do i mean not debt but bills that have to do with your livelihood those are best paid for by the work of your hands you get your salary to pay such things and then remember that you live on god's favor as we've been teaching you through the favors people who cannot suffer um and okay let me just read that again you're forced people who are immature are forced to borrow and then you borrow to pay your fast lender and the cycle continues so um, you borrow to pay salaries to pay rent to pay certain bills that are recurring and then maybe you've given yourself two weeks 
But the minute you pay that debt, the pressure goes down. So you find that now you're okay until the person who gave you the first debt demands their money to be paid back. Now you run to a second person to ask for money to repay the first person. So you have a secondary debt and you pay them. And because of how quickly and how urgently this money is required, you'll find yourself with people like Shylocks and people who can give you money quickly, loans that can be processed quickly. But you've not looked into how um, the interest rates are high. So you become a slave because now you've borrowed, the interest rates are high, the people who from whom you've borrowed from are, are, not, are not joking with you when they say that they can um, sell things. For example, you might even give a security your car or you might give a security your furniture or your um, devices. And when these people come and demand your devices back, you find yourself a bit stuck because you don't, you're not able to pay back. Yeah, you're not able to, um, you're not able to give them what they require. So you find that you're stuck in that debt continually. I'd like to see who we have online, and I'm not able to access this on my computer, so I'll just look on my phone. I appreciate my wonderful husband is on and God bless you those who are watching us from different devices God bless you so much stay with us please tell your friends to join us we're teaching you how to get out of debt and this is forever you we are people who are debt free no bank can call us we don't owe people money because they've learned how to live according to the principles of the Word of God which is what we want to share with you so that you may be free from the slavery of debt hallelujah Wonderful. Let me just get my devices to work. Wonderful. If you're a financial slave, you will be indebted no matter, no matter how much you try to be free. This is because of lack of sufficient word of God to set you free. And as we say, our work is to get you free. Even though you're already rich, your immaturity in the things of God can make you a slave or a servant right there in your father's estate. I'll tell you the story in Luke 15 of two young men. Their father was um, a rich man, but the two living with their father did not know what they, they had. One um, asked his father for all the wealth so that he could go out and spend it on himself. And then the other who was in the, um, the estate stayed around not knowing that what the father had belonged to him. And you know, this is the story of the prodigal son. You could be in your father's estate and you live on like a, a slave. You, li you live like a mere being. That second son represents so many of us. So many people don't know what is theirs. They don't know that what God has is actually yours. And it's yours as long as you know it. You know, the, the brother of the prodigal son, when he heard his brother had come back, he did not even go to get information from his father, but got the information from us, other slaves around there. And the sad thing is that the other slaves from whom he was getting information seemed to even know more than him. He did not know his position. He did not know that he was the owner of that estate. And he said, you know, dad, you've never, when he went to his father complaining, he said, I've been here working for you, slaving for you, but you've never even given me um, a calf to enjoy with my friends. And the father was shocked because all along, everything had belonged to the boy. He was free to take a cow. He was free to take whatever he wanted or needed to spend it. But he lived in that estate like a slave, thinking that he was working for his father. You too can be a Christian. You could even be a worker in the church of God. You could even be a minister, but unaware of what God has given you. You think you're here slaving and working for God. But I want to teach you the beauty of God's word. It says that you are rich. He has given you everything. As I said in 1 Corinthians 3.21, it says, all things are yours. So we start from that perspective that all things are yours. And because all things are yours, what do you need to do so that these things can become physically manifested in your life? Apart from that, because of not knowing, you might already be in debt today and want to teach you how to get out of that debt. Hallelujah. God bless you so much. Romans 8, 17 says, If a child, if, uh, and if children, then heirs, 
heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified with him. So we are supposed to suffer with Christ. We are supposed to suffer. There is persecution that has been passed, uh, that has been promised to every believer. There is an amount of suffering. And suffering as you build yourself up in Christ, as you deny your flesh, as you deny the world, as you um, exercise discipline to, raise, to cause yourself to grow and to mature. You know, the flesh cannot have what it wants um, and you have everything that you want as a believer. Even in the most beautiful relationship like marriage, there is a level of sacrifice that is required for the two of you to experience the fullness and the wholeness of that beautiful relationship. Now that you're a joint here with Christ, if you're immature, you won't enjoy that heritage. As I said earlier, immature people fear suffering. This is why they can't wait to make money. They want money now. They're impatient. They want quick deals. You know, they'll be found in where people are doing things quickly. But they cannot wait for two or three years for things to mature. You know, if you plant a tree today, a tree, a mango tree or a tree, a good tree it will give you fruit after two or three years but there are people who want to go for the crops that will take six months to mature they want quick money and there will always be a, a problem in that because immaturity is a sign of childishness you just can't wait for a period of luck to pass and of course we say that you're forced to borrow then you have to borrow to pay the first person you must learn to endure hardship like a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Joint heirs with Jesus can suffer for a while as they wait for their salary to, the, to mature. You know, um, you, can wait, you can live a less expensive life as they wait for their elevation. They can live in cheaper houses to help save money. Joint heirs of Christ don't care about what people say. They can suffer being slandered while they are waiting for their big break. Don't be the kind of person who fears what people say about you. You'll never grow. Or who must lead the life, you must have the, the clothes or the, the possessions because of what people say or because of what hap is happening around you. You can live a less expensive life. You know, you can make your life simpler. If you're living in a big house and you're in debt, um, it's better to move from that big house, get a cheaper house, so that you straight away reduce your expenses. If you um, are living, you know, um, spending so much money on different things, you can look at your finances, have a good idea of how you spend your money, and see what things you can take off, um, off your budget. You might find that if you're an indisciplined spender, you go to the shop, and you can spend um, in one shopping even up to... Um, fifty dollars or a hundred dollars on things that you didn't really need but because you were in a shop and you had the money then you thought you could just buy them you need to be a person who's disciplined about your spending make a budget go to shop in the shops that are cheaper i know this is um also especially speaking to men many times men will shop in one shop continually but you might be shopping in the most expensive place it, it does help if you could either find out where you could get food for the best price best for less if it's clothes best for less if it's um, for example groceries and toiletries not all shops are the same so find out have a plan you might find that it, it's um the difference is so big and if you have a difference of ten dollars every month on just shopping for for groceries or toiletries ten dollars in one year is a hundred and twenty dollars that is a significant amount of money that you could put into something else if you're careful about your little money you'll be able to be careful about a lot of money if you're careless with little money you will not be a good steward of big money when god is about to give you a break you will find yourself extremely careful about the little money about the dollar the two dollars the ten dollars the fifty dollars you'll not be careless if you're going out for lunch you'll be wise about where you go and how often you do it this is not to say that you cannot live a good life or give your family a good life. It just needs to be a planned life. Hallelujah. If you borrow, you automatically become a slave. And here we're specifically talking about the borrowing that has to do with borrowing for 
um, bills, borrowing for eating, borrowing for buying furniture, buying um, things that you use in the house. This is not necessarily about the borrowing for business because that is a different topic that we'll need. Every business needs to grow through borrowing. But because um, of people's greed and covetousness, banks and financial institutions have come up with a policy to enable you, they, they bank on your greed. You'll find people are even taking loans to finance their weddings. People are taking loans to finance uh, furniture. That is a wrong spending. You take a loan for the purpose of business and it's a well-planned loan so you know how you plan to repay. And once you repay that money, um, then you can always increase that, uh, that debt. You know, if you want to, to grow in your finances, you have to be a disciplined spender. Since no one taught you about money, and since you've been unskilled in money matters, your state of being has been that of a nephew's. And made you think that your financial problems could be solved by borrowing. I believe now you've realized you were wrong. You were better off before you borrowed. You know, it can be such slavery when you owe people and people are calling you left, right and center and telling you, um, you promised that you'd pay me today, you promised that you'd pay me last week, I want my money back. And you could be in such debt and such stress and suffering. But that is suffering not caused by Christ, but suffering caused by um, being a nephew, being untrained, being a child in financial matters. And here we want you to take courage because we are here to free you from that slavery. We are here so that we can remove you and help you come out of that difficult state. In our opening scripture, you noticed that even an heir of a greater state can be a slave to debt. If you don't know who you are in Christ, you borrow money left, right and center. So, the first thing in getting out of debt is knowing who you are in Christ, your identity. You are a child of God. You are a joint heir with Jesus Christ. You have everything you need for life and godliness through our knowledge of Jesus Christ. You need to know your identity. You need to know what God's word says about you, what God's word says about your riches, what God's word says about, um, um, about how you, what you have and what, you, what is yours. If you know what God, uh, if you know that God supplies your needs, you will desist from borrowing. Don't borrow even one dollar. All debt is slavery, big or small. Um, it, there's a scripture of two people who had borrowed. One had uh, owed the king a lot of money, and somebody else owed him a little money. And we read in the scriptures that. When the king saw him and he went to him and said, Oh king, give me time, I'll be able to clear my debt. But for that debt, he was his life was gonna be he was gonna be sold as a slave together with his wife and his children, just to pay off what he owed the king. And the king looked at him and had mercy upon him and um, and actually forgave his debt. And he went out and and um met a person who owed him a little money and he took that person into prison so that he would pay him so you could see that he was owed and he in turn owed so that is a cycle you'll find that you owe and you're owed i want to break that cycle so that you will not be owed and you will not owe you know one of the things that my husband and i have purpose to do is to is to is not to lend people money People have come to us and given us stories of how they're struggling and and how all they need is maybe a hundred dollars. All they need is a thousand dollars, and they've calculated how well they'll they'll come out of that problem. And the best thing we tell them is, you will be more free before you borrow from us. You are more free before you borrow from us. Endure hardship as a good soldier of Christ. If you know that this money will come in a month's time or in two weeks' time, patiently wait for it. In the meantime, don't be afraid of the discomfort. Don't be afraid of eating things that are not so um, delicious or not eating your best food as you wait for that period to end. And then you will eat as a free person. So we don't lend money because we do not want to make people our slaves. And on the same side, we do not borrow money from people, not for paying bills as I've taught you today. 
So 1 Corinthians 3 verse 1 to 3 says, And I, brethren, could not speak to you as unto spiritual, but as to carnal, even as babes, nephews in Christ. I have fed you with milk and not with solid food, for until now you were not able to bear it, neither are you able. For you are yet carnal, for in that there is among you envying and strife and divisions, are you not carnal and walk as men? Here we see that envy and strife and divisions are signs of carnality. We are not carnal people, we are spiritual people. As I told you, we are joint heirs with Christ. You change those things by changing your declaration. When you change your declaration and meditate on the word of God, your character follows who you are in Christ. Let me appreciate those that we have online. Hallelujah. Hilda Karimi, God bless you. And my, uh, my wonderful husband, Apostle Joseph, says, Best for less, wisdom, my baby. I love you, honey. Thank you. Ben will watch wonderful presentation. God bless you, Ben. Evelyn Kavaya, happy new month, church. God bless you. Happy new month, February. It's a wonderful month, a month of blessing. This month, your financial difficulties will end, and they will end because of the knowledge of God's word coming your way. And not only that, everything about your life is being elevated. You're growing. Declare that this is the year of teeth. I'm telling you, you will be stronger than you have ever been. God bless you so much. Let's continue in the scriptures. Do you know that most people borrow because of envy? You feel like you're the only one without a car. You feel like you're the only one who's not wearing beautiful suits or beautiful dresses. Your, your shoes or your uh, outlook is not as beautiful as the person next to you. You feel like you don't live in the right side of town or you don't have the kind of house you'd like people um, to see. And you become covetous and envious. You feel like you're the, only, you're the small one and, and other people are big. You feel like your kids must study in expensive schools or in a certain area. They should dress in certain things. They should be attending certain sports or, you know, different things that the pressures of life bring upon you. That feeling um, of being less makes you envious. It makes you covet an another life. And th this are, will cause you to go into things that you cannot currently afford. You feel that you must go for lunch in some expensive restaurants or you must uh, do some certain sports that are expensive. If you can't afford this and you still do them, you're led by envy and this is carnal. This also means that you're acting as a nepius, you're immature and unskilled in, in, um, in financial matters and this is what is causing you to be in debt. So what's the way out? How do you come out permanently from this problem of debt? The first thing you must do is to put childish things away. This happens when you thoroughly study God's word, when you pray in tongues all the time, and when you fast. Remember, people will, will be afraid especially of fasting because these are, it's, it's not comfortable. You know, it means go without food. Sometimes go without food and water for a day or two or three. But I'm telling you, embrace the suffering with Christ. As we read in our scripture today, we are called to suffer with Christ according to Romans 8. So embrace that suffering. Pray in tongues. Stay awake. Study. Build yourself up. Spend time in prayer, both in tongues and in this in, and in understanding then um, remember that you're a joint here with Christ as you do this you will be putting away childish things first Corinthians 13 11 says when I was a child or a nephew I spoke as a child I understood as a child and I thought as a child look at that order in first Corinthians 13 verse 11 as a child he spoke as a child, understood as a child, and thought as a child. That is the wrong order. If you speak before you understand and before you think, you can imagine what you'll be thinking about. It's childish. It's a wrong order. But when I became a man, in this case, Uyos, I put away childish things. You become a man. In this case, I'm not meaning the gender, but you become a mature person as you put uh, through the word of God and through knowing God's word and through putting it into practice. 
How do you put God's word into practice? You first hear it, and then you believe it, and then you speak it. You will not do what you're not speaking. You will not do what you're not, you've not heard. If you do not have the word of God, um, you cannot do it. So the first and most important thing to do is hear the word. Um, Romans 10, 17 says that faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Now what is faith? Faith is the word of God in your spirit. So your faith in financial matters is built when you hear God's word. When you take that word and um, believe it in your spirit and speak it and then after speaking it, you do it. Whatever God's word says, you do. God's word says that you are joined here with Christ, you believe it, you speak it, and you do it. So you shall not lack anything. Now, between the time that you speak this word and the time that it manifests, that's a period that you need to be a patient and continuous believer in the word of God. Some people give up in that waiting period and they say, oh, this thing never works. I rebuke you because you're being impatient. You're being childish. Let the word of God grow. Let your spirit grow so that you're able to embrace and, um, and receive all that God has for you. To be a, a mature person takes time. You now we have two beautiful children. Um, Dara is eight and Miss Gab is five. And we have waited. I remember when um, they were born and we waited for the stage at which they start to speak. And at one year they started to say a few words. Or just before, less than a year, they started to say a few words. Started to walk. And they were walking, holding things. And we had to support them. And then by two years they were running. By three years they could communicate a few things. Um, by four years, they started school. It has been a process of growth, a process of maturity. We cannot expect them to do the things an adult does without taking them through training, without teaching them. But when we teach them, then they learn that aspect and that concept and they can grow in it. It is the same for you. Hear the word of God, believe the word of God, speak the word of God and, let, and then do what the word of God says. Hebrews 5, 13, 14 says, for everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness. He is a babe, a nephew. But strong food belongs to those who are of full age, even those who by reason of use have sense, their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. So that's a beautiful scripture in Hebrews 5. 13 and 14. It says, For everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of God and in the word of righteousness. He is a babe. He is a nephew. So a nephew is a person who has who is still receiving the milk of the word of God. But what you do, don't feel sad if you're a nephew. Eat. Have a good appetite for the word of God. Desire the word of God. Read it. Hear it. Grow. And as you grow, then you, you start to take strong food. Because strong food belongs to those who are of full age. Uyos, those who are growing. Even those who by reason of use, by reason of putting to practice, have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. So your maturity is dependent on your growth as a child of, uh, as a child of growth. And growth comes by knowledge. It's so important that you grow in your knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. First Peter says um, that we possess all things through our knowledge of God's word. So continually hear the word of God. As you hear the word of God, you will grow and you will be able to experience the fullness of the riches of, of the word and of what God has given us. First Peter 2 verse 2 says, As newborn babes, nephews, Desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. And you graduate from being a nephew by knowing the word of God. Desire the word of God so much. Make it your number one commitment. You'll grow even without noticing. Once you've grown, you'll notice you have moved away from slavery and you'll start seeing heritage manifesting. Hallelujah. So the way out is grow in the word of God. Just have such an appetite to read the word of God. Don't let a day go by without studying the scriptures, without studying the word of God. Um, my husband and I go through a beautiful devotional called the Rhapsody of Realities. 
and daily it's the first thing we do when we get up we study god's word we spend a good amount of um the first hours of our day in study of scripture as we drive around we'll get our bible to play we'll get to hear messages from wonderful preachers of the word you know we'll read books that continually um, tell us about the word of god develop an appetite for the word of god you'll be amazed you'll be so um amazed by your own growth and you'll see the benefits of god's word working in your life now what do you do if you're already in debt if you're hearing this message and you're already in debt the first thing you do is don't borrow anymore stop borrowing discipline yourself and stay away from borrowing and here we say this is not we're not talking about borrowing for finance uh, to finance business we're talking about borrowing for living the second thing is that please go and write out all your debts write out those that you owe and the amounts that you owe them and then start by paying off the small debts don't despise your capacity to pay off debts if you owe one person ten dollars another thirty another fifty another seventy start by paying off the small debts they will really encourage you when you um, when you cross off and you've paid the first person ten and the second person um, thirty the third person 50 you'll be so happy so relieved and it will encourage you if you are able to pay ten dollars every month start by paying off the first person and then the second month even if it takes you three months to pay off the second just make sure you're making progressive development in paying off debts focus on it and suffer a little uh, a little bit by leaving a slightly lower standard of life as you pay off what you owe you know as I told you, make yourself um, uncomfortable for a little while. You know, don't buy clothes, don't buy um, things that are luxurious for a while. You know, go to take your children to schools that are good but not too expensive. Make sure you're buying good clothes. You can buy clothes that are cheap but from um, a place that clothes that are good looking but not necessarily expensive. Um, look good but it doesn't have to be expensive and, and that happens when you go out looking don't buy in the first shop one of the wisdom about shopping or about buying things is take time as you shop compare prices then buy the best for less number three remember your legal rights you know no one has authority to auction you or touch your property without a court order many people don't know this you know, landlords are not um, aware of what law they, they have when, when they're locking their clients' doors, when they're locking the doors of their tenants. You know, actually, according to law, if you have a tenancy agreement, no landlord should um, come and just lock your door. There is a court order for them to do that. Sometimes they live an auction property, but that happens because you're ignorant of what the law of the country says concerning tenancy agreements. So please also be educated about uh, the rights that you have in your country. The court won't give permission to auction or touch, um, or touch your property if you have proved that you can pay, even if it's a small amount. Even if you owe, for example, $100 in rent, if you prove in the court of law that you can pay off that debt, um, maybe $10 or $20 at a time, then your property, the, the landlord has no right to attach your property. You, the court will give you an understanding and give you, you know, a period by which you should finish paying that debt. Pay what you can and live a life in freedom as you work out to continue servicing your debt. And you know, sometimes people could even have got um, debts through student loans, through um, loans they took um, from banking institutions, um, through mortgages. Maybe you, you took a mortgage when you had a good paying job and you left that job and you find yourself struggling. If you find yourself in such a situation, please go to the bank and discuss with them. Never fear. The next point is, do not be afraid to talk to the person you owe, the financial institution you owe. Whether it's a Shylock, it doesn't matter who gave you the money. Go to them and discuss your predicament. People harass debtors when they go missing. When a person feels that you might not pay them or you're evading them, then they will, they will hunt you down to make sure that you pay them. 
but if you owe a person and before they give you a call you call them if you are supposed to pay money on on the 2nd of February which is tomorrow and you find today you don't have it please be the first person to call the person who owes you tomorrow don't let them call you you call them and tell them I am aware that today is the day I should be paying you. Please be patient with me. I have not forgotten you. I have not forgotten that I owe you. It's just that it's not with me now, but be patient with me, I will pay. That is the wisdom of God. When you use those words, it is the wisdom of God from Scripture. Be patient with me, I will pay you. You not only activate um, heaven to work for you, angels work according to the word of God. So when you speak those words, your angels will go gathering money from wherever it is. And I'm telling you, sometimes you might be looking from one source, and God has so many other sources from which money could come from. You might find a person who owed you money from many years just calling you and sending you money you might find the person who had told you they'll not be able to pay you um, for a business transaction just saying you know I got a, a breakthrough and I thought of you immediately so don't limit God in what he could do remember God has a way of touching people's hearts and they might just give you a breather so don't run away make the phone call don't avoid people's phone calls if you owe people please and and they call you please don't avoid that phone call pick it up be kind be um and you might say what if the person on the other side is not very kind to me say you know what i'm aware that i owe you and in the most polite way tell them be patient with me i will pay you back um in matthew 18 verse 26 and 27 um, I was talking to you about a, a servant who owed money to the king. And that servant, he fell down and worshipped the Lord, saying, Have patience with me, I will pay you all. Then the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion and released him and forgave him the debt. Oh, how beautiful. You can see that some of you, even some of the debts that you owe, as you speak to people, they will have compassion on you and they will forgive you of the debts that you owe them. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Then, um, you must be disciplined from now on. Don't borrow unless you have an elaborate cash flow plan or a good business plan stating how you, pay, you plan to pay, pay back what you've borrowed. Only borrow for feasible business and not for personal use. We're never supposed to finance our personal use through loans. Loans are for the purpose of business. And they come, um, when, when we receive loans, we're supposed to have a proper repayment plan so that we also do not um, become, fall under the, the cycle of uh, debt. Hallelujah. Before I finish, I'd just like to acknowledge those who are with us. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, my honey. You've been saying, Hebrews 13.5, Said, who have by reason of use exercised their senses to design the good and the bad. Eat the word of God and grow. Thanks, baby. You're teaching good. Hallelujah. Thank you, honey. I appreciate that even though you're not here physically, you are with us continually in, in, um, in the broadcast. So, um, my husband has written there in the notes, number one, stop borrowing. Number two, write down the names of all the people you owe and the amounts you owe and start paying off the, the smaller debts don't undermine your ability and your capacity to pay off debts number three remember your legal rights attachment of property can only happen with court orders you know it's it's very sad that we've watched in our city people being auctioned by landlords because they were ignorant people no one has an authority to auction your property without a proper court order so even though you owe for two or three months, make sure you're discussing. Please have the legal information. You know, you could find yourself in a tight spot. Have the legal knowledge um, of what to do when you find yourself in such situations. And then you get a period and you will be able to pay off. And if you find yourself in such a situation, move from that house. Go to a house that is cheaper so that you can use whatever money you will be saving then you can pay off your landlord just tell them be patient with me i will pay you off it's better that you pay them back slowly and finish that than that your property is attached and you lose the house and lose your property number four don't fear taking talking to the one you owe the heart might be uh, might be just to show you mercy 
sorry their hearts might just show you mercy as you say be patient with me and I will pay you hallelujah God bless you so much and then um, Matthew 18 26 that's the code that cancels debt the code that cancels debt is be patient to me if you owe somebody please go and talk to them if you owe a bank or whatever institution talk to them and tell them be patient with me I will pay you back you know there's a wonderful lady that is a good friend of ours and she came to us many years back and um, she came and brought us a paper with her all her loans written she owed a number of institutions the first thing we told her is go to this institution then tell them be patient with me I will pay you back and she went to each and every institution I remember it was um, December when she came to us and during New Year's uh, we released blessings upon her that is about 10 11 years back and I can tell you that that year the next year by the month of June she had paid back every one of those debts she simplified her life I remember her deciding that she was not gonna drive her car all over she she simplified her lifestyle made things easier for herself so that whatever money she had she could pay back the debt I remember at that point she even had, had a mortgage and the bank was threatening to take back to repossess the house and she went and talked to the bank and the bank gave her more time and beauty and now she's a beautiful owner of that um, house that she was taking then in fact it's so beautiful because she housed her family in that same property so I'm speaking to you things that have worked for many people they will work for you too. be bold don't be afraid of suffering don't be afraid of the period it will take to turn around these things We're in the month of February if you will follow this um, beautiful direction that we're giving you it would this year will not end with you being in debt not only will you have come out of the red not only will you have come out from um, that cycle of and slavery of debt you will be a person that has money has money to do your things then you'll be able to finance a better lifestyle to have a planned way of living hallelujah God bless you so much so I want you to all grow up and renounce greed, renounce covetousness, renounce um, impatience. And if you can't afford it, forget it. Don't go for things you cannot afford. Forget it. Now, as you plan, as you put into savings, as you get out of debt, you will find that later you'll be able to enjoy a better life because you put, you lay down the right foundation. Now, I want to pray for you who are in debt right now so that you will be freed from that um, slavery. I declare that now by the anointing on my head, I break the shackles of debt that, you have, that have bedeviled you for years. I free you from debt in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I release compassion and mercy upon your creditors and I send angels this day to go and soften their hearts towards you I decree and I declare debt cancellation towards you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ be free from the demon of debt in Jesus name I deliver you right now in the mighty name of Jesus wherever you say shout amen you are free you are free I declare you are free in the mighty name of Jesus Christ so rise and walk in that freedom follow the steps that we have showed you because we've cast out the demon of fear I mean we've cast out the demon of debt that has held you back now you can break the sh now you can walk free and you can um, you can change your lifestyle as we have taught you today I want to appreciate you all who have joined us I appreciate you I love you so much and declare that you are blessed have a wonderful rest of day evening and god bless you god bless your families god bless your homes god bless your businesses and everything to do you are a success in jesus mighty name hallelujah so until tomorrow have a wonderful day and night or night god bless you